Hi and welcome to another edition of the Grasshopper Component Glossary. This is a tutorial about circles. This is part two, so you might want to consider going back and watching part one if you haven't already. And of course, please consider clicking the like button if you like this video, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. In this video, we're going to take our two-dimensional packing problem and move it into a three-dimensional space. We're still going to arrange circles on a two-dimensional surface, but that surface will vary in all three dimensions. That surface is going to be a sphere. And in the second part of the last video, we didn't even use the circle component. So we'll bring this back in. I'm going to hide this. And again, let's disable the zombie solver. And I'm going to start with a component from a different tutorial that we made in a different tutorial. This is a mesh triangle mesh sphere. I'm going to get a mesh component just so we can see what's coming out here. So, so again, this is a little tool that was made in a different tutorial. It's a useful thing to have. This tutorial is available for New Luca Pavilion members at pavilion.newluca.com. But if you haven't done that tutorial, you can use something like the Weaverbird's dodecahedron component. So let's hide this. And I'm going to get a curve component. And we're going to make a component that gives us the planes and the radii for all of these polylines so that we can do something kind of like circle packing on a sphere. So I'm going to copy this and hide this. And again, I'm going to get Weaver Bird's dual graph. Apologies if you don't have Weaver Bird. There's a link on how to install that below. It's very easy. So I'm going to hide this. So you can see we already have what almost looks like a soccer ball. We have pentagons and hexagons covering a sphere. Let's get a custom preview component. And I'm going to make a material create. I'm going to type in create material. And I want zero shine on this. I'm just going to use this to visualize the mesh coming out of here. And let's get a color swatch. And I guess we don't need that now, but we'll need it in just a little bit, or we won't need it, but it might be helpful. And then let's call this polylines. So let's make a component that we can plug in either these or these and get circles packed into those spaces. So all we need from each of these polylines is a plane and a radius. So we want to approximate what plane each polyline is on. So under the vector tab under plane, I'm going to get this component called plane fit. And the first thing I'm going to do to these polylines is say discontinuity. This is going to give us all of the points that make up the polyline. So a polyline is basically just a list of points and then lines between those points. So it's a list of points in a specific order and it's just like connect the dots between those points. So I'm going to simplify the output here. So we have a, a number of different branches, 162 different branches, and each branch contains the points that make up those polylines. And if I put those into the plane fit, I'm going to get a plane that approximates where all of those points lie. So we're going to try to find, so we're going to try to find a plane that hopefully all of those points are very close to. And they will be pretty close because as you can see, these almost look like they're flat shapes two-dimensional shapes, but they're not quite, they're a little bit off. As you can, this dx right here is saying what's the, the maximum deviation, how far is the furthest point from that plane. And these are all small numbers. Um, actually, there are some very small numbers, and some are even zero. But yeah, it's, um, it's a pretty good fit. So let's get an average. So this is just going to give us basically the center point for all of those shapes. And then let's say curve 
closest point. These averages are going to be our points. And the polylines are going to be our curves. But we need to graft this. Actually, I don't want to graft that input yet. I'm going to graft it here. And simplify it. Okay, there's those two trees match. We can see we have 0 through 161 here, and 0 through 161 here, and the paths look the same. So these distances, this is the closest point from the center of these shapes, the average, to the polylines. And so these are going to give us our radii, the radius value for each circle. So I'm going to get a number, and I'm just going to call it radii. And then I'm going to get an output, cluster output component. And let's get another output component. So now we have our planes and our radii. There's actually one more thing that will be helpful to take out, and that is our points, the middle points. I'll just say centers. So let's package this up into a component by clicking this little folder here, cluster, and hide what's coming out. And then we can put our planes in here and our radii in here and show the result. And we have circles packing and you can see that some of them are overlapping and that's because I forgot to do a step in here. Sorry about that. The step I forgot to do is plane origin. We need to change where all of these planes are. So these are our base planes, and we want to put them here. So these are our center points. We want to center the point. We want to center these planes. Uh, that might be the problem. It looks like this is a little bit better. So we can see that now these circles are just barely touching, which is what we want. And this approximates pretty well circle packing around the sphere. Let's see what it looks like if we plug in these. So this is from the Weaver Bird the Decahedron component. And let's visualize these. I'm going to get a pipe, uh, maybe a parameter mesh pipe, a radius of 0 0.001, less than 1. I'm going to get a range component, put this up to uh, I meant this right, 50. This is going to give us 50 steps between 0 and 1. We're going to put that into the U so these pipes closely match a circle. Hide this. So now we have some very thin pipes. We can increase this a little bit. And let's get a custom preview and a color swatch. We can also make surfaces out of our circles. Uh, create material again. Actually, since I already did that, just grab this and it's custom preview. Something like that. And then back to this one. If we Reshow this, then the mesh is in the way. So something we can do, fix that. We get a curve component. Let's call this circles. I'm going to flatten this. And let's move all of these circles out a little bit. I'm going to get a component called vector two point. This is going to be uh, our B and then I'm just going to get construct point because we know the center of this sphere is at the origin and if we get a construct point component this is just going to give us a point at the origin at zero zero zero. 
So that can be our first vector. I'm going to flatten the, this list also. So now we have a lot of vectors pointing to the center of all of these circles. So we can use that to just move these circles out a little bit. And let's unitize this vector and get a multiplication. We'll say 1 point 0 0.001 or 0 less than 2. So just enough to, to peek out over the surface of those. And let's use those as our circles. Push them out a little bit more. more. Okay. So that's it for this tutorial, the circle component tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and see you soon on the next one.